So one of the things I was wondering um, about anxiety, um, because I know young people find a lot of ways to cope with anxiety, um, and every way isn't always productive. Mm -hmm. And so I was wondering if you had suggestions for the type of practices, um, habits, um, attitudes that we could nurture mm -hmm. in our young people when we know that they you know, struggle with anxiety or that that's a thing that they might struggle with. Um, what types of things would you uh, suggest that a youth minister mm -hmm. or a mentor do so that young people can have something that even when they're not, they're not around their mentor, mm -hmm. they have something that can sustain them mm -hmm. when they face anxiety? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think some of the interpersonally, when you have these mentoring relationships that Alan was just talking about, I think some of that happens naturally. These kids kind of go back to you in their heart um, and they think about what you've said and um, they might uh, be inf influenced by it. But I think uh, one thing we can do, um, let me just mention a couple things about youth group uh, to begin with. Um, one thing that can be done in youth group, I think, is naming it mm -hmm. um, and just a if it's, uh, I think it's 20% of kids or something like that or have, have gone through it um, or are going through it. Uh, I think we need to be really intentional about framing youth group as a different kind of place than society. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ways in which uh, uh, young people gather at church and they experience a kind of competitive environment that mirrors the culture. So they play a game where there's winners and losers. Um, and I think there's ways for leaders to playfully challenge those dynamics and change them. And when leaders can take, uh, say, a game that you have that was going to be competitive and shift it a little bit, um, leaders can actually let kids deal with their anxiety in the group a bit. And so uh, there's a, a range of different things that can help you do that. Games like chase or uh, capture the flag, there's already things we're doing already that deal with these dynamics of separation and reunion. Um, but I think that, and there's games like the dunk tank when the <laughs> youth leader gets, or they get their head shaved, that lets kids kind of like work out their aggression or uh, flip the tables a little bit. All those things are really helpful because they kind of like, what you want to do in a sense is open up the space for play, a playful attitude rather than one where there's a winner or a loser. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you might want to just overturn those dynamics or say, we're going to do things differently because you feel like you're winning or losing everywhere else anyway, right? Um, so you name what you're going to do and then play with the kids and try to create a different kind of space. I think anxious kids need a different kind of not-so-programmatic youth ministry, mm -hmm. um, but they also don't need totally safe space, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. They need, they, w they need to be engaged still, but some of the ways that we do really loud super programmed youth ministry may not work well for kids with attachment problems or anxiety. Um, so we need to kind of reimagine what that might look like or include different kinds of engagement for kids who, who might struggle with anxiety. Um, so maybe just a variety of different learning styles for that. Yeah, I, I agree. I appreciate that. The I think naming it's really important. Um, we, conservatively, between a quarter, maybe closer to a third of kids between 11 and 18 will experience anxiety that's significant enough to qualify as a disorder in the DSM-5. Now, that doesn't even account for the, the kids who have a lower level anxiety, which may not meet the criteria for a clinical diagnosis, but nonetheless gets in the way of living the life that, that he or she wants to live and their parents want them to live. And so again, there is an epidemic, many people argue, of anxiety that um, is, is with us. And so I think naming it's really important and, and even normalizing it in that sense, not, not to say that it's not something we want to assuage or to help improve. So not normal in that way, but normal in the sense that you're not alone, mm -hmm. right? I mean, one of the um, things that, that anxious people report across the board, whatever their age, is a sense of feeling all alone. Mm -hmm. No one understands my experience. Um, I'm the only person, quote unquote, who feels this way, which clearly isn't the case mm -hmm. if a quarter to maybe upwards of a third 
uh, of, of people at some point in their lives will experience anxiety that's significant enough, enough to be a disorder. They're not alone, but it's not talked about. It's taboo. Um, people are ashamed to feel anxiety, yeah. and so they try to hide it. And what we know is anxiety that's, that you try to hide becomes more pervasive, and you become more symptomatic, and it becomes more difficult to deal with, whereas naming it mm -hmm. and trying to find ways to talk about it actually can be therapeutic. And so practices, I think, that lend themselves to that kind of uh, naming, that kind of normalizing, uh, that kind of remo removing the otherwise taboo conversation about anxiety are really, um, are really important. Um, and, and there are data that show that, that this is effective in, in, in group kinds of counseling settings or group therapy settings. Um, one of the reasons those are successful is people can talk about their own experience out of their own space that we talked about earlier um, and, and give textures to that experience that are not only efficacious for themselves, but we know are, are efficacious for others who listen in on their stories and are able to map their own stories onto their stories in ways that help them to feel less alone and more ultimately more supported. Mm -hmm. And I might just add, um, in the context of a church setting, one of the things that anxious teens really benefit from is experiencing worship and uh, being reminded uh, of a provident God. Yeah, um, And yeah. that there's uh, some of the te texts that I know Alan's going to talk about in his lecture too, um, but having ch a chance to worship and release some of those um, everything kids are carrying just by themselves I think is a crucial part of it as well.